Hi. I finished the quilting. And so, and I have trimmed the edges and now I'm doing the, ba the binding. So, Harpsy8, one of my most stalwart commenters with his cat, um, says that last quilting bee one I did in, in color. And he says, oh, it looks good in color because I've been doing all these quilting bees in black and white, you may have noticed because I didn't want to give away, especially to Sujata Shaw, uh, what this is going to look like by showing color. So I've only been doing the black and white. That's the reason for that. Um, so I've got a lot of feedback on what I was telling about how you shouldn't be afraid, you should do what you want. And uh, H. Nelson said that she's been piecing her quilt backs. In spite of the fact that she has a friend who says she's ruining her quilts by doing that. <laughs> I think now she, she knows friends like that, we don't need, at least in every aspect of our life. And uh, Credenza One, hi, uh, talked about collaboration and how she benefits from uh, collaborating because she, uh, you, you learn a lot. It's true, you do. I, I did some collaboration in India with an Indian quilter and um, it turned out <laughs> to be more than we bargained for even because she wound up <laughs> taking care of me when I nearly died in the hospital. So, and she was she was a person uh, that uh, Devayani Kachari, who lives in India, but made a special trip, and uh, we did quite a few pieces together. Well, two pieces together. Uh, it, we didn't do as much as we thought we would do because. Um, I dash my stuff off pretty much, but she's a very fine craftsman, and uh, so that meant we didn't quite go at the same pace, but it was still very good, and I have two very nice pieces out of it, and she just didn't uh, didn't take take one of the pieces. Anyway, yeah, collaboration is is good, can be good. Um, Oh, so now that was a pink, pink project productions um, wants to know about my masks. If I still do the masks, you know, the nice thing about living this long is you can do uh, quite a few things, and I did many, many, over a hundred portrait masks of people. These uh, were, were masks that I would make on the person's face with a plaster, like a plaster cat mold of the face, and then I would uh, uh, prepare that surface and then do a collage on the mask, which was a, my impression of that person the inner person. So it was, it was almost like an unmask because uh, it was showing the things that maybe that person doesn't normally show. It, it, I, I did a lot of those. I had several exhibits. I still have a huge stash of them. I don't know. When I pass on, there's going to be a gigantic exhibit of all these things. Yeah, right. But, you know, you basically do have to die first. Um, but I did quite a few celebrities. I did uh, Mickey Hart at the Golden, at the 
Grateful Dead, Jeremiah Tower, Stan Getz, quite a few people. So that, that was uh, fun to do. Um, now, post. Oh, Joanne, uh, Jonah Osborne, you want to know how to post a photo in a comment? Actually, I know how to do that on Facebook. I'm not sure I know how to do that on YouTube anymore. You know, they they changed it. They they ruined YouTube, I think, because you used to be able to post a video on as a comment on somebody's video, and that meant all all kinds of things could happen. That you that really was a wonderful thing. Now uh, you can't do that anymore, and I don't not even don't even think you can do a photo. So if I want to put some photos in, like with this uh, video, I'll have to go into uh, 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 Final Cut and do an editing thing, which I normally do anyway, and then I'll insert some photos in there. But uh, as for uh, you putting one in a comment. Now on Facebook, um, Linda Sophie, uh, uh, JD Sophie or something, uh, you know who I mean, and Mary Magpie, they have posted photos on my YouTube, on my Facebook channel of things they're working on, cushion covers or whatever. So that's that's working there, and thanks for, for, for posting those. Oh yeah, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. <laughs> Long time no see. I know, I will. i do a photo, uh, cooking. People are asking for some more cooking videos. So, uh, it's on my list. <laughs> Something. So somebody. She wants to know. She's evidently she had heard that at some point in my life, I uh, did did a project where I was disguised as a man. And she wanted to know maybe a little. Could I talk about that a little? Well, yeah. We're talking about Vincent. Vincent De Luna. Uh, well, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Um, I did uh, go out disguised as a man uh, for uh, about two years, and uh, I had a very good disguise. It was very good. I put a lot of money into it. I had a very good beard and wig, mustache, and... Um, the reason I uh, did this, one of the reasons, the driving reason that persisted for two years, was I was just curious as to what it must feel like. Well, what is a man feeling like when he goes to a movie or when he's in a restaurant? I, I, wanted, I wanted to know how does that feel? It must feel different. I learned an immense amount. I mean, even language. I had to learn new language. There are certain words and certain expressions a man would never say. And, uh, uh, but, but that we say certain words. I don't think I've ever heard a man use the word cute. Um, and I had all kinds of phrases. I had some help on that. Um, and then, of course, what, what finally happened, well, not finally, but early on, I started to feel different because, because of getting that different feedback, that meant there was a, a channel was opened where another part of me could come out. Another part of me I didn't even know was in there. So, uh, 
so much of our behavior is is directed by what our feed what our feedback is, what kind of input that we're getting. Uh, that then we act the way we act because of that. And so then I seeing this other person coming out, I, I had a way of talking, it was pretty uh, I tried to, I got my voice as low as I could. That never seemed to give anybody a problem. Incidentally, my own kids didn't even know me, let alone friends and things. So I could I have uh, it was a very good outfit, and now my body is very distinctively shaped. But then I was tall and slender, and um, so it wasn't a giveaway, not the shape of my body. Um, so then I thought, well, there's, who is this person? This person. So well, it was Vincent, Vincent de Luna, a poet. And so, uh, I had my cards and everything. When I was out, I'd go to bars and meet people and all kinds of things. Uh, for instance, one, one thing that was um, one of my first experiences was going to a movie. You know, actually, if going to a movie, if, you, if I was out and I had to, to pee, I'd go home. I was just too nervous to go into a men's bathroom. Um, uh, I, I finally got over that. <laughs> and there, there's a million stories. I could write a book. He kept a journal. There were, uh, there were many stories. But here's just one example of one of the first things, being a man. Because when I, I go to a movie alone, say, when I would go to a, a movie alone ever, and I'd get there a little early, I'd go in and sit down. That's just what I did. But when I was a man, I'd go in and I'd stand around in the lobby for a while, just checking things out. I never did that when I was a woman. So these things were just surprising little episodes. Anyway, I could go on for days on that. But I guess uh, I guess I, I will call it quits on that. Okay, so that does it for today. What did I take? Thirty stitches. Bye.